After months of preparations, the Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched a major military operation against Ukraine. A Russian invasion of Ukraine created sanctions unlike anything Russia had ever seen from the West. As a result of these sanctions, we look at the crippling costs of millions of euros per month the Italian government are paying to keep assets frozen. As Russian tanks rolled over Ukraine's border in February 2022, the West looked at ways to retaliate without starting World War III. A raft of unprecedented sanctions were placed on Russia by the US, the EU and the UK, plus other Western countries, to try to make them reconsider. Russia, no stranger to sanctions from the West, could not have expected the sanctions to be as expansive as they were. Pressure would be put on the people who are close to Vladimir Putin and in some cases members of the Russian political system. Russians known to have benefited from the relationship with the Russian president or who are benefiting from the resources taken out of Ukraine in the occupied territory. Before the invasion, Russian president Vladimir Putin summoned 40 of the most important business leaders in Russia to the Kremlin. Included in this group was Andrei Melnichenko, owner of one of the largest fertilizer companies and one of the largest energy companies in the world. Melnichenko has a worth, according to Forbes in 2022, of $11 billion. Mr. Melnichenko owns two super yachts. The first, a 190 meter or 390 foot yacht called Motiot A, and a new 142 meter or 465 foot sailing yacht called simply Sailing Yacht A. The older yacht was in the safe waters of the Maldives at the time of the sanctions. However, the other, newer Sailing Yacht A was in Trieste in Italy at a shipyard undergoing repair work to her forward mast. The vessel was out of the water and was a sitting duck, unable to sail away as the forward mast was missing. On the 11th of March, just three days after the sanctions hit Mr. Melnichenko, the Garda di Venanza, or the Italian Financial Police, boarded sailing yacht A in Trieste and handed over arrest papers for the vessel to the captain. The arrest of the yacht, estimated to be worth over $550 million, meant that the Italian government was now responsible for all the bills for the upkeep of the vessel. Just 60 seconds to tell you three reasons why you should be using NordVPN. Number one, security. If you frequently use public Wi-Fi, such as at airports or coffee shops or at work, you should be using NordVPN for increased security. Also, if you live in the UK, your service provider must record all your internet usage for 12 months in case the government wants to look at it. Using NordVPN will make this impossible. Number two, did you know that what you watch on Netflix in the UK is not necessarily what's available in other parts of the world? One of my favorite TV shows is not even available on Netflix in the UK. So I connect my VPN to the US and hey presto, I'm watching it. Number three, don't be the product. If you're thinking, hey, I've got a free VPN and it's just as good, you're wrong. A free VPN will show adverts, plus they will log your information and sell that information to advertisers. Anyone offers anything for free and you have to ask yourself, what's their business model? Let's put it this way, if you're not paying, you're not the customer, you're the product. NordVPN does not log, and this has been independently audited. Go to NordVPN slash eSysman to get the two-year plan with an exclusive deal, plus four months free. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, back to the show. As the Italian regulation 109-2007 says that the asset must be returned to the owner in the same condition in which it was at the time of the freezing. Days after the vessel was arrested by the Italian authorities, both Melnichenko's yachts lost their flag state as they were deregistered by the Isle of Man shipping registry. They also had their Lloyd's classification withdrawn, all as a result of the sanctions. This meant both vessels would also lose their insurance, as to be insured, you must have a flag state 
and classification. The yacht was still in the dry dock she had been occupying at the time of the arrest. This meant the shipyard was bleeding money as they were unable to use that facility. So the shipyard began to apply pressure to the Italian government to move the giant sailing yacht. The government agreed to move the vessel, however, as the yacht now had no insurance, the costs of damaging the vessel whilst refloating and moving the boat would fall on the government. The government's security committee postponed the decision on moving the boat until a new insurance policy could be attained. The government was now paying the salaries of approximately 30 crew members working on board. The cost of this is around 200,000 euros per month, approximately $205,000. Just for salaries, nothing more. Eventually, the giant yacht, the largest assisted yacht ever built, would be moved once that insurance was paid for. And remember, the policy is to cover a vessel worth half a billion dollars. The Italian government was now on the hook for close to 1 million euros per month, as the insurance policy is believed to have cost several million dollars per year. The costs for the upkeep of sailing yacht A work out at approximately 20 to 30 thousand euros per day for one super yacht. After approximately 100 days from the freezing order, they had already spent more than 3 million euros on the vessel, almost 3.1 million dollars. And sailing yacht A is not the only asset arrested by the Italian government. In fact, it is one of many which include a 116 million euro or 180 million dollar property in Sardinia owned by Alexei Mordozhov and a property on the same island owned by Alicia Usmanov, owner of Dilbar. The government also has to provide correct maintenance on these properties. And the list goes on. Another yacht, Moti yacht Lady M, seized in Imperia, also owned by Alexei Mordashov. The yacht Lena in San Remo, owned by Gennady Timchenko. And the latest yacht to be frozen by the Italian authorities is the massive 140 meter or 459 foot behemoth Shaharasad, claimed to be owned by the former head of Rosneft, Edward Kutenatov, but authorities believe him to be a proxy owner for the real beneficial owner, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Shaharasad was stopped after reportedly preparing to leave a shipyard in Marina de Carrara after a refit period, estimated to be valued at an eye-watering 660 million euros or 670 million dollars. With a crew of 40, the monthly bill for salary alone is approximately 250,000 euros or 253,000 dollars. And with insurance and other costs, most likely another 1 million euros per month. And as the yacht is inside the Italian Sea Group's shipyard facility, the government is most likely paying for that space also, so the fees for the yacht nicknamed Putin's yacht could be costing the Italian government 1.5 million euros per month. Add these figures together, with all the other yachts and properties currently seized or frozen, as the Italians seem to prefer calling it, and the bill is possibly 10 million euros a month or more. The money being paid out by the authorities for the upkeep will, hypothetically, be recouped when the assets are returned to their owners. However, the longer the war goes on, the more money they have to pay out with no sign of an end. The government is musing selling the assets to recover their money. The problem, however, is with the legislation mentioned earlier, 109-2007, which was issued for use to fight the financing of terrorism, and as such has limitations in its reach. The sale of assets could result in a lawsuit for millions. So the Italian government is talking about changing the legislation to make it easier for them to dispose of these financial anchors. It is uncertain whether any sale would happen. The fact is there are only a handful of people in the world with the kind of wealth needed to purchase vessels like Sailing Yacht A or Shaharasad, and they probably have the sense to stay well clear. Mm -hmm.